Hello everyone, my name is Arun and I'm back with another video and today we are going to talk about OLAP, Online Analytical Processing. So let's see what's there in the agenda for today. All right, lots of question marks. So let's solve them. We will explain what is OLP. We'll go through certain examples. Then we try to understand why we use it what purpose it solves, what would happen if we don't use it, and what are the use cases, then we'll try to compare it with OLTP, and finally scenarios to understand what all we learned, can we apply that knowledge to, to the scenarios. And all these questions that we are raising, why, what purpose, these all will help us to understand OLAP. All right, so let's get started with uh, what is OLAP. Well, OLAP stands for Online Analytical Processing. As the name says, it's Online Analytical Processing. Think of it as a high-powered magnifying glass for data. It allows business to look at their data from different perspectives and dimensions, turning raw data into insightful information. Or we could say OLAP is a technology that organizes large business databases and supports complex analysis. What it does, it's a technology that organizes large business databases and supports complex analysis. It can be used to perform complex analytical queries. That's what the complex analysis is. And it will not impact your transactional system because ultimately everything is coming from there right transactional databases we'll understand it in in the in the, in the same video so let's try to understand a few examples that i have mentioned <clears throat> imagine you run a chain of toy stores you have a sales data for every store every day for multiple years and for thousands of toys now you want to answer questions like which store had the most sales last December? Which toy was the best seller during the summer across all stores? How did toy sales this year compare to the previous year? So these are the insights that you can easily get once you have all the data in place and you are preparing OLAP solutions. So with OLAP, you can slice and dice the data to answer these questions quickly. All right, so this is what OLAP is. So let's try to understand it again, just to cement the knowledge, which is the ultimate purpose of this video. So the databases that a business uses to store all its transactions and records are called online transactional processing databases right that's what we said at the very beginning olap after otp right so databases that business uses to store all its transaction and records are called oltp or online transaction processing databases these databases usually have records that are entered one at a time often they contain a great deal of information that is valuable to the organization the databases that are used for OLTP, however, were not designed for analysis. It, these are designed for the transaction purposes, asset properties. Therefore, retrieving answers from these databases is costly in terms of time and effort. So what we are trying to say with OLAP, time and effort. Because OLAP systems are designed to help extract the business intelligence information from the data in a highly performant way. These are not prepared or, or, or created for the transaction purposes. These are for uh, analytical purposes. It will save time and effort and it will give you the intelligence. This is because OLAP databases are optimized for heavy read. Heavy read in transaction is right. Transaction is happening and low write workloads OLAP. So now I believe and I hope we have a pretty good, a decent idea what OLAP is. All right, so let's try to understand first why we use it and what purpose it solves. Because we know what it is now, 
But the question is, why are we using it? What purpose it's solving? So that all these dots will connect each other and there would be a, some decent picture in our head so that we could explain OLAP if somebody asks us. All right, so let's try to understand why we use and what purpose it solves. So the very first thing, OLAP databases are optimized for querying, making the retrieval of complex data faster speed so you can have the insights in very small amount of time very quickly you can have the insights and it, it is uh, as i said at the very beginning complex queries complex data analysis you can do it easily with the help of olap solutions then flexibility users can look at the data from multiple dimensions in our toy store example dimensions could be per year entire month locations uh, where the different branches are, different kind of products you can see, all these kind of insights or you can easily get the information. So hence flexibility. And ad hoc queries, unlike traditional databases where you might need predefined queries, OLAP allows spontaneous data exploration. And of course, when we have the entire solution in place, you have the analytical tools uh, like Power BI and other stuff that even the non-technical guy can easily figure out all those things. When we have some kind of modeling in place, semantic layer in place, well, that comes later in this video, but just for the information, because if you're running queries on the SQL directly, on a database directly, then you must know the T-SQL, right? Uh, anyways, <laughs> let's go to the purpose. Well, what purpose it solves? Well, business can make decisions based on data-driven insights, hence informed decision-making. As in uh, a toy store uh, example, you can easily find out which toy is the most favorite for the, for the kids of that particular age or maybe at what location, what kind of toys are more uh, sold so you can have those, sold, those toys uh, shipped to that particular location informed decision that's what you can do through through this no lab for your business then of course identifying patterns because when you analyze your data uh, you can have the trends business can capitalize on opportunities or address potential challenges and i gave you the examples right uh, maybe a particular branch or in a particular location is fan of uh, some captain america or maybe Iron Man, so you have those kind of ship there. Maybe not a good example, but you can relate, right? So enhanced productivity is the third purpose. Because you have informed decision making, it's it's impact, it's of course uh, helping your business. Since OLAP tools are user friendly, even non tech staff can explore data without relying on the IT department. You need not to learn the T SQL, right? So it is enhancing the productivity these two ways because you are taking an informed decision and your, you do not need an IT all the time to give you the information. Even the non-tech guy can figure it out once we have the OLAP solution in place, right? Now it's time to understand what would happen if we don't use it because it's not like from the beginning of time we are using OLAP. It's just like uh, from last decade, it's too much uh, uh, in, in conversation. So if we do not have this, then of course we have the slower insights. We have explained it earlier as well because uh, traditional databases might not handle complex queries as efficiently as uh, uh, these OLAP solutions does. Moreover, uh, it doesn't impact the transaction. But if you run those, try to run those queries on the on the on the transaction database, of course you will get the results, but of course it will hamper the performance. So slower insights. Then limited perspective, because without the ability to slice and dice data, business might miss out on key insights. Because data is coming from so many sources. Somebody says USA and other data says United States of America, right? Somebody uses the sign, somebody uses the name, things like that. So things will not be clear. Perspective would be limited. So you need to have one uh transformation kind of thing in place which will get the duplicate entries removed and streamline the data for the for the limit less perspective then then of course dependency on it 
we we talked about it in like in every point. So non-tech employees might constantly need IT's help to pull and analyze data in case of uh, you're not using OLAP, you're using OLTP and transaction, you got to learn the T-SQL. So you need to have the access to the IT people who knows the T-SQL. It's not like every IT guy knows the T-SQL. Let's check a few use cases. Companies can generate monthly, quarterly, and annual reports to see the performance matrices into different dimensions and I explained uh, business reporting. Then trend analysis, business can identify which products are becoming more popular. We can easily relate with the toy example, toy store example. Then budgeting and forecasting, by analyzing past spending and revenue, companies can set future budgets, right? And they can have the forecasting, suppose this is the latest movie which belongs to Guardians of the Galaxy and everybody wants to buy the Groot forecasting. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know not a good example, but you can relate, I hope. Uh, so in conclusion, OLAP is like a, what, Swiss Army knife for data. It offers a multifaceted view of information, ensuring businesses not only uh, see the complete picture, but also understand it and help you take the informed decision, forecasting, things like that. And in today's competitive landscape, having an OLAP system is not just an advantage, it's a boon. It is a necessity for data-driven decision-making. All right, so we are good with the OLAP as of now. Let's see. OLAP versus OLTP. We mentioned both a little bit. OLAP is the main uh, focus point of this video. So we, we did mention OLTP a little bit, but you know OLTP already. Uh, so OLTP is online transaction processing. Think of this as the uh, you know, uh, uh, databases with the asset properties usually uh, uh, highly write oriented than read. OLAP is read with low write. All right. So you could say you could think as a OLAP uh, is like a mind and OLTP is like a heartbeat for your for uh, if it makes sense. If it doesn't, just forget it. <laughs> All right. Let's see the key differences through this point, the purpose. What purpose these two solves? And of course, these two are different things, so they both solve a different purposes. OLAP used for the data analysis, OLAP, analytical processing. So it used for data analysis. And what will, what will we do after analyzing the data? We'll do decision making. It answers questions like which region had the highest sales last year. And OLTP, it manages daily operations. It processes, processes actions like placing an order or updating an inventory. So though both are solving a different purpose and both have a different database design. OLAP typically has a star or snowflake schema, making it efficient for complex queries, uh, dimension and table uh, facts. And OLTP usually follows a relational model, ensuring data integrity and fast transaction processing. Both has different purposes. That's why both has different database designs. And that's the reason both have a different data volume. Because OLAP is getting data from all the places. So it deals with large amount of historical data. And OLTP is like everyday processing, everyday transactions to so manages current transactional data, which is comparatively very small as compared to OLAP, it's smaller. And that's why the query complexity, if you're running it on a huge data, finding out uh, different uh, aspect of the data, uh, analyzing the data. So of course you need to run the complex queries. So OLAP, OLAP uh, supports complex involving aggregations across, across multiple tables as well. And OLTP is simple and quick, typically affecting only one record at a time. So what is the relationship between the two? Well, data in OLTP system often gets transferred to OLAP system for analysis. You can think of OLTP as the frontline data gen generator or gatherer, while OLAP is the analyzer. Okay, so you might have OLTP for multiple uh, applications, belongs to the one organization and all the data is getting into the OLAP. So OLTP handles the business day-to-day -day operations, but once the data is old or needs to analyze, it's sent to OLAP system. 
Now let's uh, see a few scenarios just to cement the knowledge when to choose what OLAP or OTP. For example, e-commerce store. Could, and let's put the scenario as processing a customer order. Well, OLTP because we are processing an order because it's daily transaction. And if analyzing the year's most popular data, then it's OLAP as it requires aggregating the past sales date. Uh, we can take one more example as in bank, a customer transferring money to another account. OLTP as it's a real-time transaction. The bank wants to analyze the spending patterns of customers over the past five years. Then, of course, we are analyzing OLAP as it's complex data-heavy query. So, uh, Let's conclude this with uh, while OLAP and OLTP have different purposes, we explained there are two sides of the same coin. OLTP ensures the business runs smoothly day to day while OLAP provides the insights needed for growth and improvement. Choosing between them depends on the task at hand, immediate transaction or deep analysis. Ultimately, both are there to run the business as efficient as possible and grow the business in this modern uh, architecture of applications. So let's see some scenarios for OLAP because these are the scenarios to choose OLAP versus OLTP. We, this is the scenario that was mentioned in the agenda and this is a typical example of an OLAP processing where we have the client applications, multiple applications sending data to OLTP system because these applications are the front end, these are the back end. Here the transaction is happening and once the data is getting older, we are moving all the data into the Azure analytics services. And then the analysis is happening, transformation is happening, semantic modeling is happening. And then with the help of Power BI or reporting services, we can have the reports, dashboards in place for the non-tech guys or the business guys or the suits. <laughs> So let's take an example. A multinational retail company uh, wants to analyze its sales data. This data includes transaction details, product details, customer information, and store information. The primary objective is to understand the sales performance, customer behaviors, and product popularity. Now, just stay with me. These are the most wonderful scenarios that you have ever been. This is the scenario, and we are going to break it down for the OLAP. So what is the first thing that we need to do? We need to ingest the data coming from various uh, sources. Data ingestion. So transaction data, details of every sale uh, made, including product ID, store ID, customer ID, data of purchase and amount. We have product data, details of each product, including product ID, product name, category, and price. Customer data with customer ID, name, age, gender, location, and the store data, like store ID, location, and size. We're ingesting all these uh, multifaceted data to the uh, uh, data lake or maybe blob storage. So data ingestion through multiple data sources. And... Uh, then how but how are we ingesting with the help of Azure Data Factory? Or you could utilize Azure Synapse, which has inbuilt feature of multiple products or send unified product, Azure Synapse. Anyways, the point is Azure Data Factory is utilized to ingest this data, transaction data, product data, customer data, or store data, uh, and put it on the blob storage or data lake. So as of now, there is nothing uh, extraordinary we are doing, nothing advanced we are doing. We're just connecting through the connectors, all the data sources are coming into the data lake or blob storage. But the important thing is, when we run this, uh, when we use Azure Data Factory, it, it, it has uh, advanced skills as well. It's not just like copying and pasting or uh, data from source to destination, but you could also do basic cleaning like removing duplicate entries, filling uh, missing values and correcting format inconsistency. You can prepare, it's an orchestrator. You can prepare the pipeline, data pipeline, where you have multiple tasks, task to copy data from source to a destination. And in between, you are applying uh, these tasks like cleaning uh, performed where you're removing the duplicates or filling the missing values or correcting the uh, format inconsistencies. And then the data processing in Azure Synapse Analytics. 
what is there in the processing? We have like transformation, converting product prices from different currencies to a standard currency. Maybe you have uh, data from multiple uh, regions. Uh, some like in India, it's rupees. In the US, it, uh, US and in Europe, it's uh, euro. So you have to get the data in a standard currency so that you can compare. You could have the uh, real insight and you did not to uh, run here and there to change the uh, digits. Then aggregation, that's the transformation, example of transformation, then the aggregation. Summing up total sales for each product, each store, each region, that's what is happening during processing in Azure Synapse Analytics. And finally, uh, you can also apply calculation, like calculating the average sale amount, profit margins for products and customer lifetime value, things like that. So these are the data processing, uh, some examples of the data processing. Then finally, data modeling. We are we are doing data modeling in Azure's analysis services. We we will talk about why modeling, what is the importance. But for now, what we'll do in the modeling, we'll do like hierarchies, time hierarchy, like year, quarter, month, and day. We'll do product hierarchy, like category, subcategory, product name, location hierarchy, country, state, city, and store. These 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 things we are like abstracting a layer over the data where non-tech people can easily go and check. That's what you're doing. You, we will explain this in the next video very uh, in, in a very simple language with very simple uh, examples. Stay with me. Do not, do not lose the uh, example. So that's what we are doing, data modeling. Or we are defining uh, the matrices like total sales, average sale, total profit, number of transactions, or relationship between the tables like connecting transaction data to product data using product ID, allowing us to see which products have the highest sales. Then finally, once we have this data modeling in place, after the data processing, we have data visualization. And it can uh, work efficiently, effectively, because we have already done the processing and modeling with OLAP model ready now a business user can see which product are the top sellers in q1 in the usa drill down to see top seller in new york in january slice and dice data to compare sales of male versus female customers observe trends like a sudden increase in sales of winter product during december or any festive season so in summary in our example raw transactional data from stores Worldwide gets transformed into actionable insights. The company can easily understand its performance metrics at various granularities, like global sales for the sales in a specific store on a specific day, and act on these insights to improve its business strategies. Similarly, we have another example, uh, example where a large hospital chain is aiming to improve patient care and optimize its operations. They want to analyze patient records, treatment histories, equipment usage, and staff schedules. So what they want to analyze? Patient records, treatment histories, equipment usage, and staff schedules. Their primary objective is to understand patient recovery patterns, resource allocation, and staff efficiency. So what will happen? We need all this data at a single place, right? So data ingestion is our first point where we are getting uh, data from patient records, treatment data, equipment usage data, and staff data. All these data source, uh, we'll get data in a single place like blob storage or data lake with the help of data factory. Again, we have multiple steps we can apply on the data factory. Uh, it Because it's an orchestrator, it will help us to create the pipeline we can apply the basic cleaning, like removing any incorrect entry or duplicate entry or ensuring data privacy by masking certain patient details and uh, resolving discrepancy in drug names or equipment names, things like that, the basic cleaning. Then of course, data processing and data modeling. In data processing, we'll transform, converting diverse state formats to standard one uh, or aggregating, counting the number of patients treated for each alignment, summing up the equipment usage hours and calculating staff working hours. And then calculation that we take another example, like determining the average recovery time for each, each patient. Then data modeling. Again, we'll apply the hierarchies like year, month, week. And if you talk about disease hierarchy to be the like 
uh, disease category like cardiovascular, then a specific disease like heart attack or complications related to heart, then staff hierarchy, department, role, individual staff member. These kind of hierarchies we can create under data modeling. We can define the matrices like number of patient, recovery time, average recovery time, and the equipment usage hours and things like that. Once we have all the data modeling, after data processing, we can hook it up with the data visualization in Power BI. And a hospital manager can analyze the average recovery time of patients suffering from cardio diseases in the past year. It's not that cardio, it's cardiovascular disease in the past year. Drill down to see the recovery patterns of heart attack patients specifically. Cross-examine data to check the efficiency of specific treatments or therapies on recovery times. Understand patterns like increased hospital admissions during flu season. So we can have these kind of information with us because we have OLAP in place. I hope this was informative. I uh, It was a wonderful session. Uh,